Okay, ready to go. Yep. Hi, I'm Louise, and we're here to talk all about swaddling today. Uh, we've got gorgeous little baby Stella here with her mum Stacy, who have come to be our little swaddling model. And then later on, we're going to have Charlie, who is um, a little bit bigger and is just about to come out of swaddling. Um, his mum Linda is tackling the weaning off swaddling at the moment. So we're going to have our two babies. Um, and if our babies lose the plot, we're also going to have a fake baby who's over there sleeping sweetly. <laughs> so we just, um, it's quite uh, new for us to do Facebook Live and particularly to do Facebook Live with live babies. So we're just going to see how we get on. So bear with us if, um, if there's any squealing. So um, today we're just going to talk a little bit about the five S's from Dr. Harvey Karp to start with. Um, and then we're going to go into some swaddles for little babies like Stella, particularly with a focus on summer. And then we're going to go into this pile over here, which is sort of transitional swaddles, which um, we're going to try on Charlie um, to look at different ways to leave arms in and out of swaddles um, as your babies get bigger. And we can talk at that time about how you know when it's time to wean off swaddling and what some of those signs might be. So, first of all, um, we just introduced you to The Happiest Baby by Dr. Karp. If, um, if you haven't seen this, it's really worth looking out for either the, oops, what's that one? <laughs> either the book or the DVD. And The Happiest Baby was our original inspiration for the sleep store. Um, when I had my second, no, when I had my first baby, I discovered um, The Happiest Baby with Jack, and it was amazing. It was like an off switch to his never ending screaming. And so we were quite excited and for a couple of years I would track down um, copies of this book. The DVD wasn't available then so I would get the book and everybody I knew that had babies received this men at work, friends, anybody were always presented with this book. And so then when we decided to have our own business um, we based our product range and information on the five S's. So we're going to just talk about the first two which are swaddling or these swaddles and also a little bit about the shushing, which is the white noise. So the swaddling, when you have a newborn baby who cries or can't get to sleep, or you're trying to get them to sleep for longer, the swaddling is like the foundation. So the stopping this arm flapping around <laughs> is one of the ways you can start to calm your baby and get them to sleep for longer. And a colicky baby or an overtired baby, um, again, the swaddling is the way that you can start to to control the crying and help your baby calm down. Um, for some babies, swaddling itself won't stop them crying. It's the kind of first step. So a lot of our um, our customers or people who contact us for sleep advice will say, my baby hates swaddling. They cry when I swaddle them. And often that's because the baby's already overtired. The baby might be hungry or the baby might be overtired. Um, so they might be crying anyway and the swaddling is not a magic bullet. So start with the swaddling and then layer your other S's on top, like your white noise. So white noise, if you're not familiar with it, is a shushing noise. I think it's got a turn on for us. So this is white noise. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> This is the little Marpac Hush, which has got really good volume control on it. And so if you imagine inside the womb, it's been recorded that it's louder than a vacuum cleaner. 70 to 80 decibels, whereas average vacuum cleaner is about 60 decibels. So your babies have had nine months of continuous loud shushing. Um, and so that's one of the things that helps switch off their crying and help them feel more settled. Oh, you're going to cry now, I'm turning it <laughs> off. So we might get onto our swaddling now. Um, I have just put some other different white noise machines there if you want to have a look at those um, in the corner. And then if you have any questions about white noise, James is, um, is going to be looking at the questions that you send in. I hope you send some because otherwise we'll feel a little bit unloved. So we might just... Oh, um, and so we'll answer your questions as we go. Right, so let's look at our first swaddle. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to be focusing on summer swaddles because it's, we're starting to get um, lots and lots of questions about about swaddling um, as the temperature's warming up. So this one's the Ergo Cocoon, so we might just pop Stella into it before she, she gets any grumpier. 
Um, and also it might help. <laughs> Thank you to my helpful assistant. So what we love about the Ergo Cocoon and why it's such a um, such a recommended option at the sleep store is it's really easy to use and it's really beautiful lightweight organic cotton. So it kind of ticks the boxes in so many ways. You just tuck your little arms in, try not to zip up any little fingers. <laughs> And that's all there is to it. And you'd have to say it's extremely cute once it's on. <laughs> so it's got, um, it's brilliant from a hip health point of view. You can see that Stella's got tons of wriggle room. It's, it's quite wide in its shape. They've just actually increased the width so some of the older stock is still a bit skinnier. But tons of room for wriggling and kicking. You can see these adorable little fingers here. <laughs> um, to get it zipped up you need the arms kind of down by their sides but a baby will get the arms into the position they're comfortable with <laughs> and it's totally escape proof and um, doesn't really require any instructions or something complicated about the ergo cocoon what do you think of that one is that one looking quite good <laughs> yes giving that one the tick of approval very good all right so if anyone's got any questions about the ergo cocoon fire those through to james now this one comes in lots of really cute colours and, and prints. That's a bigger size one that we're going to try on Charlie soon. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is another really popular option for summer, which is the Swaddle, Love to Swaddle Up Light. So this one's 30% lighter than the original Love to Swaddle Up. It's um, extremely fine stretchy fabric. I'm just going to show you here too a way to pick up your babies is to roll them on their side slightly and then bring them right in close to you when you lift them up because every time you lift up your baby to change their nappy or swaddle them or anything it, that can be unsettling to a baby even when it's their mum let alone when it's some random lady blabbing on for TV. <laughs> So the closer you can get your baby to you and the more gentle you can make those movements, the less likely the whole swaddling thing will upset them. Look your little hands in. So is this one that Stella is used to? Yep. Yeah. It's all right. There we are. Cute. You're a very good baby model, aren't you? Yes, you are. So you can see again a similar shape to the Ugo cocoon. They love to swaddle up. It's really wide from the hips down. It's really stretchy fabric. It's a snug fit through the middle. You don't need to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to take that one home. Um, and then the main difference between the swaddle up and the the ergo cocoon is the position of the hands. So um, the swaddle up, it's got the hands up. <laughs> and it's a good one for um, babies as their startle reflex is starting to wear off. And you can see that they can still get to sleep with um, a little bit more movement. Um, also a really good option for people who haven't been swaddling um, but they've got a catnapping baby and are keen to try some swaddling for during the day. A lot of um, babies who aren't swaddled at night will still sleep much better during the day with some sort of light swaddle like this that just takes, you know, takes the edge off the startle reflex. Can you smile at the camera? Yum, yum, yum. There we go. Another trick too, um, if your baby's unsettled when they're being swaddled, is just to roll them onto their side and just give them a pat on the bum or rub them on the back. And this is just about calming, it's not about getting your baby um, sleeping on their side because we should always have sleeping on their back. But I used to find with particularly one of my boys that he could be screaming his head off and I'd tip him on his side and he'd stop and I'd put him back and he'd scream and I'd tip him. It was a bit like a game, probably shouldn't have experimented on the baby to see if that technique worked. <laughs> it really does work. Okay, shall we take you out of that one? It's alright. Do you want to have some white noise on? Shall we see if that works? Yeah, it's okay. So we might just try one more because I think that's going to get a little bit grumpy soon. 
um, so we might just show you this one here because this is quite an interesting one and when we got this one out of the packet we were all a little bit puzzled about this and thought maybe it needed like an entire video to show us what to do <laughs> but this one is the Ugo Cocoon sorry the Ugo Baby Swaddler so Ugo Baby are famous for their carriers and this is their swaddle which um, came out about two years ago and the original ones were like kind of sweatshirt material and we all just used to get a bit hot, hot and sweaty just looking at them but this is the summer weight one and it's a nice cotton mesh that you can kind of see through so um, I'll just pop this one on Stella because it's a bit hard to um, see it from just on a picture yeah how are we going to get you in there because it's a bit complicated <laughs> <laughs> I might just pick you back up actually you're getting very tired and wriggly do you have a sleep? No, she just had a sleep. Oh, she just popped this one in the bottle. <laughs> okay, you can go and have a bottle in a minute and we'll play with Charlie. Okay, so here we go. Back down. And we're going to pop in here. This one is a little bit like a straight jacket. Oh, you're really <laughs> not sure about the straight jacket. So with a lot, as with um, Ergo Babies carriers, their whole um, driving force is hip health. So with this, it uses, see, this just sits up, Velcro's on there, so you can see the hips are held in that froggy open position. And then the pouch you can add if you want to or not. Shall we have Charlie now? Is he ready for a bit of baby modelling? <laughs> okay, so while we're having Charlie come over, we might just do um, a little spot prize. I'll just turn off that white noise for now. So I have here Tawin right now. We've got some people watching, James. I shouldn't like give it to myself because no one's watching. <laughs> Okay, so this is a um, Sweet Dreamies, um, which are made by Kuski. So a lot of you are probably familiar with Kuski's um, beautiful comforters, but this is a Sweet Dreamies. And they're the softest, most delicious muslins you'll find. Have a feel. Give us your independent muslin verdict. <laughs> yeah. Soft. Yeah, beautiful, soft. Um, and this one's one that's never been washed, so they get even softer when you've washed them. And so Sweet Dreamies, you can use... Um, you can use it as a feeding cover if you feel the need for that. You can use it over um, a bassinet. Um, you know, if you've got a bassinet with an arm, you can use it for a shade. You can use it just for a, a regular old school muslin swaddle. My um, six year old still likes to wrap one around himself. Um, and my eight year old actually has a red and black one. <laughs> so they're, um, they're so soft and they're such a good size that you can just use them to snuggle on under the sofa or take them traveling or whatever. So we've got one to win, so just write um, Sweet Dreamies in your comments and James will pick a winner in a couple of minutes. We've got lots of actually, so. Oh, we're we'll back. We're back? Okay, yeah. cool. Don't freak me out with that. <laughs> so he's a big boy, seven kilos, and um, we're just gonna go through some options similar to what we did with baby Stella, but particularly looking at arms in or out. So what is it with Charlie that's making you think it's time to ditch the swaddle. Well, when we swaddle him, he's starting to fight and bring his arms up, <laughs> yeah. whether we like it or not. Yeah. And he started pulling the blankets over his face doing that, so we thought, no, we need a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right, Danny. Oh. So this is the Ergo Cocoon that we looked at first with Stella. But this time we're going to look at it from a transitional point of view, about the different ways you can use it and... Um, how it's really good for this age and stage. So this is the next size up, so this is the 3 to 12 month size, so you can see it's going to fit Charlie for quite some time. Um, you can use it with one arm in and one out, 
So this still gives Charlie the sense of being swaddled. It's still cosy, it's still snug through the body, plenty of hip room, but he can start to get used to one arm out. And if your baby is at that kind of in-between stage um, and may or may not settle with one hand out, it's really easy to just, you know, poke the arm back through and snap the little domes shut. And then you've got the same on the other side, um, so it's probably actually easier to unzip it and not like bend your arm off too much. Oh, it's all right. You're not sure about both arms yet. <laughs> there you are. And so then that turns into a really sweet little first right. sleeping bag. And so then that will last you right through summer, um, you know, once you actually go through that transitional stage of arms in or out. So often at around three months um, is a good time to start looking at weaning off swaddling. A lot of babies are still swaddled till five or six months, particularly with one hand out. Uh, the signs really to look for are that your baby's starting to fight swaddling. Um, particularly people who have swaddled with a muslin or something just square, by three months most babies could escape that. Um, so that might be a sign that you need something Houdini proof with a zip, or it might be time to just look at one arm out and then getting rid of the swaddle altogether. Oh, you're looking at your mama. She's so cute. The other sign um, that's really time to um, to wean off the swaddling is when your baby start rolling. So swaddled baby sleeping face down has seven times the SIDS risk. So definitely don't want any babies swaddled with both arms and sleeping on their tummy. So if you see any sense of rolling, it's time to leave at least one hand out and to start working towards getting um, both, hand, both um, arms out of the swaddle or just swapping to a straight sleeping bag. But something like this with a big strong baby that can push up um, is, is fine if you've got the arms out once they're rolling. And then also once you've got one hand out, you can start to have, you know, if you're going to introduce some sort of comforter like a kuski or another soft toy, um, once your baby's six month, over six months old, they're fine to have that sort of thing in the cot with them. Okay, so since you've been quite agreeable, Charlie, we might get you out of there. He's got one of these at home. Oh, That's why he quite likes it. He's quite used to it. He's <laughs> just outgrown his. Just part of their new range. So now we might just show you um, this is a new one made by the Grow Company. I'm just looking at the length of Charlie of the sizing up with it. It's going to be you'll squeeze in there. So this is Grow's version of um, the same sort of idea as the Ergo Cocoon. It's got domes that you can open up for the little arms to come through on both sides. It's really nice and wide through the hips, and it's a lovely lightweight summer fabric too. Up you come. Could give you that one. Yeah, back down you go. You're not minding that so far. <laughs> difference with this is that it actually I've just noticed it zips up at the neck so you've got to get your zip, zip lined up the other ones all zip um, from the bottom up here we are so that's pretty cute on you so you can see it's quite a different shape it's more the sort of sleeping bag shape um, and they've added the swaddle part at the top winner for our swaddle? Jessica Fraser. Jessica Fraser. So if you can drop us an email, Jessica Fraser at inquiries at thesleepstore.co.nz, we'll send out your sweet dreamies. We've got a question from Georgia. She's got a little girl that's six months old and went to sleep without her sleepy dream swaddle. How can she change that so they all still get sleep? Say the first part again. She has a six month old that won't sleep without her sleepy dream swaddle. Like to sort of transition her away, how does yep. she change that so they all still get sleep? So sleepy dream swaddle, I'm wondering is it is that the sweet dreamies or is that a different sort of swaddle? Sure. Maybe we better ask her another question. If that was your question, can you just let us know is it a muslin that you're talking about or is it a different sort of swaddle? Mm -hmm. But at six months, um, if your baby's sleeping fully swaddled still with arms, both arms in, what I'd suggest you do is start using a sleeping bag 
and wrap over the sleeping bag because by six months you've got a really strong association between like with this one here if little Charlie um, zipped into something like this for every sleep by six months he's going to know that this means sleep and he's used to having his arms in um, and so you really need to just work on changing that association so something like um, like having your baby in a sleeping bag and then doing a wrap around over the top initially with both arms in um, and then one arm out um, and then ditch the swaddle all together and you're just left with the sleeping bag so you just go through a transition of swaddle into sleeping bag so hopefully that answers your question if not let us know some more information is there any demonstration of that with the wrapping we over could the do that. Bag? Should we do that? I might just show you um, a couple more swaddles and then we'll do the sleeping bag over um, and the swaddle combo. It's a cute one. My, my babies all would look for babies for far too long. <laughs> they were well and truly addicted. But that's all good. No problems with dummies. With the uh, with the sleeping bags, though, is it okay to have them in, in have them in one in a large bassinet? A sleeping bag in a large yeah, bassinet. Baby's five months old. Yeah, absolutely. Some um, particularly um, in some European countries, babies go into sleeping bags right from day one. So countries like the Netherlands, um, they've always for years have slept their babies in sleeping bags, um, and they would go into a bassinet or a most basket or or wherever they sleep from day one in a sleeping bag. So it's absolutely fine. The key things to watch are the rolling, really. Um, and if you've got a big baby, big strong baby, you just really need to also watch for kind of loose bedding. Like if you're swaddling with something like this, and you've got a, you know, a big six month, five or six month old, who can escape this, then that's quite a lot of fabric that you don't want loose around your baby. So really wriggly babies, it's best to have something fitted with a zip. <laughs> Right, we're just going to show you the 50-50, um, because this is another great light option. This one comes in an original weight. Oh, it's alright. Oh, we're just going to show this with one arm off. It's alright, is it? Do you want the white noise on? Do you have the white noise? Or you can have your dummy back. He's fine to have his dummy in. I'm not bothered at all. <laughs> He likes it. Here we are. So that's just another version. Arms up, one arm out, and then you can take both arms off as well. And this is the same kind of really lightweight cotton with just a hint of lycra. Okay. <laughs> Oopsie, I've gone the wrong way. I've got IQ tests in my hands. So has Charlie been having his arms out or has he still got both arms in at the moment? Well this week I've tried putting his arms out and swaddling over the top yeah. with the, I think we've got a miracle blanket or... Oh yes, perhaps he. But I wondered if that's too hot for him. It could be, it's getting very sticky during the day now in Auckland so if you've got one like this I would just try with one arm in and one arm out and not worry about anything else over the top. The other thing too with um, the transition or if you're going from something that's quite restrictive to more arms up is sometimes you just sort of need to actually hold their hands while they fall off to sleep and then once they're asleep they can resettle themselves. Uh, so I'll just show you one more because you can see it's a, it's a sleeping bag um, and then it's got an attached swaddle over the top. We're just going to work out how to actually get you into this, dude, because it's a bit... It's not as rocket science. <laughs> we're just going to... We're just going to get that up to sort of shoulder height. Have a good stretch, that's it. So this has just got a little snap on the shoulder, which is your sleeping bag part. So for this here, we could go one arm in and tuck that down the side, and then the second arm we could leave out like that. So it's the same kind of concept. Like this would be a good one for babies who've um, 
had there been swaddled firmly with the arms down and you're looking for a kind of a next step that will enable you to have one arm in, both arms in, if Charlie say he's been trying for, you know, 10 minutes and he wouldn't go to sleep, he could just come in and go, right, we'll have that arm, thank you. And then he'd probably settle really quickly if that's the kind of um, swaddle that he was used to. Looking through your little hand peeking out there. <laughs> so a lot of these swaddles are really, once you get into the sort of over three month size, a lot of them are really generous, so you get, you know, you get plenty of use out of them. Now is there a swaddle you'd recommend for a newborn? A newborn, my favourite for newborns is the Miracle Blanket. Yes, it's thirsty work talking. Um, so yeah, the Miracle Blanket is always our best pick for for newborns because it's really firm and it's pretty much escape proof and we love it. Unfortunately, we only have it on our New Zealand website, so if you're in Australia and you're watching, um, you won't be able to order that from us. Um, my second favourite for newborns um, is the ergo cocoon and for the middle of summer this is the day sleeps during the summer this would be my pick for newborns um, it's firm it's got plenty enough um, startle control for even a brand newborn and it's nice and light also um, the newborn version of the halo also is really good for newborns just put this on this settles Charlie down or we'll be having our fake baby <laughs> so this is um, another really good option, so it's the same concept as the sleeping bag with the wrap around it, but it comes in, sm in newborn or small. What's the What's the What's on the This one? No, the one on the back. Here. This is the wrap sack swaddle made by Summer Infant. You make that noise, sweetie. Should we have a look at this um, sleeping bag and look at some options for introducing a sleeping bag and then swaddling over the top? There's a couple that we can go through. wool babe here that we're going to use. This is a three seasons weight so it's perfect for this time of the year and these are made in size 3 to 24 months so from about 6 kilos so Charlie would be the perfect size to start using a bag with. What season doesn't that cover? <laughs> it really depends on how hot or cold your house is so um, I always use the duvet weight because we've got a old <laughs> freezing cold house that's drafty as anything um, so we always I used to use the duvet weight from probably April through to October and then once once you sort of feel for yourself that your winter weight duvet is getting too hot then it's time to move into like a mid weight bag and if your bedroom is probably over 25 26 regularly through the day then a summer weight bag um, is good but this is um, yeah, this is cotton and merino blend so you never get the kind of sweatiness like I would find with my babies sometimes like their head behind their head would be really sweaty and they'd be kind of like warm but when you unzipped it their core still feels just right never never kind of sweaty or hot inside the bag oh you look so cute in it Jane. this is our new piha color that we're very excited about um, so a couple of ways to swaddle over a bag, so this is what I was talking about earlier in response to that question about get your baby used to a sleeping bag rather than the swaddle and then there's different ways that you can you can help control the startle reflex while they just get used to the change. So this one's called Sleepy Wings and it's like a crazy little bolero jacket which you just pop Thank you, this one might be a wee bit small, I hope it's going to be stretchy enough for you, I don't know if it is. I think maybe we need the next size up. <laughs> That's alright, you can get the idea. So if you had the big enough swaddle, you just tuck the arm in here, and so they get used to the sense of being in the sleeping bag, they get used to the extra room and that it's not really tight around their tummy, um, but their arms are controlled with the swaddle. Is that what was there? was no way in. First that was going to go round you. 
think that was like the tiny baby size, not the big boy size. Right, well we might just at this point, I might just, um, I'm going to show you about a miracle blanket. So um, we can give away a miracle blanket. Oh, thanks James. Um, so you can choose between Aquastar's miracle blanket or Colour Boost Miracle Blanket. So if you'd like to win a Miracle Blanket, which we're going to show you how to use right now, just pop that, um, your colour preference, in the comments and James will pick a winner for those Miracle Blankets. Okay, so this is the Miracle Blanket. It's not nearly as complicated as it looks. <laughs> this was my favourite way to transition from swaddling with my babies, because um, I was always eager to get them into a sleeping bag. <laughs> because we love our wool babes <laughs> and also because we've used a miracle blanket particularly with my youngest two um, with my um, older two I just mostly used um, old school stretchy cotton kind of um, wraps like this because back like my oldest is 13 now feeling about 100 myself but my oldest two boys are 13 and 11 and so things like even miracle blankets or any of these fitted swaddles hadn't yet been invented and so it was old school um, square wraps all the way. But my kids can't even believe that computers didn't used to be invented. <laughs> really? What? Okay, so with your Miracle Blanket, if you're not familiar with it, it works by these little arm flaps. And so you can totally just arm flap over your sleeping bag. So there's your baby getting used to the sleeping bag. And there's no way they're escaping from that. And if it's this time of the year when it's starting to get a bit warm, I would just tuck the excess fabric underneath your baby rather than go round again because it's getting a bit warm for that. Yeah, that combination would be okay in this weather. Yeah. If it's in the day and you've got, um, you know, quite a warm house, you definitely would want the lightest weight sleeping bag rather than this mid weight. Um, and you just do one wrap round rather than two. You probably just need a nappy inside because each layer counts as a layer of clothing. And then if it starts to get really warm, then you know you want a fan or something. So then if we're gonna do the swaddling, uh, weaning off the swaddling with this combo, you can just do one arm in and one out, like that. And because of the little arm flap, that's just gonna stay secure. Shh, it's all right, it's all right, okay, it's all right. You're not looking at me very happily. <laughs> Just see it. <laughs> and get it close up. <laughs> and so sometimes with the transition, it's really like what happens with this arm. So actually, just helping baby get settled down while you hold their hand or. Um, just hold it down by the side and stroke it. Something just to get them away from realising that they can flap their arm around. Just get something else to show you. Oh, don't fall off the end there. Oh, my bones are <laughs> So sometimes too when you, if your baby sort of four, five, six months, it's um, the time when you can start to think about introducing a comforter too. So something like that um, can be a good way to occupy the hand. And then they'll just start to snuggle with that instead of hitting himself in the head. <laughs> yeah. And then that formed another sleep association. So then you go from sort of being fed or patted or rocked to sleep in a swaddle to being able to snuggle with something in the sleeping bag. All right, do we have a winner, James, for our miracle blanket? Uh, Maya Harris. What's that, Maya? Maya Harris, Aquastars is coming your way. Good colour choice. Um, Maya, so if you can just email us on inquiries at thesleepstore.co.nz. Okay, now does anybody have any other questions about swaddles? Anything you want to have another look at or find out anything else about? Um, send them through now. So I think our babies are going to get quite tired in a sec. And one more prize for you. 
or maybe more, depends how long we're chatting. We have this beautiful pack of Aiden and Anae's Smuzzlin Swaddles. Um, give us a little heart on the like thing if you like Aiden and Anae's. They're one of our most popular brands. They're like the world's most famous muslin because they're so beautiful. They're not quite as soft as the Kuski ones because they're um, cotton rather than bamboo. So the bamboo is what gives it the real softness. But if you'd like to win this, um, this design is called Wink. So you can just comment with Wink and somebody's going to win that shortly. Better make a pile for all the loot. So that office is like piles of loot that <laughs> need tidying up. Never ever do a Facebook Live at my desk because it's a total shambles. We have a question about um, the lady has a the house gets up to 32 degrees in the summer. Yep. What would, uh, what would you recommend for dressing baby or swaddling baby in temperatures like that? Do we know how old baby is? Newborn. Newborn, okay. So 32 is very warm. So the first thing I would investigate is what you can do to cool the room down. So um, can you put some shade? Um, can you get a fan? Um, is there a different room baby could sleep in? Because that's warm. I had one of my um, children's rooms was that kind of temperature and it does, um, it is warm to be dealing with. So if you can do anything else, um, maybe have something, some water um, in the room can also help. Um, have some cold water or ice in front of the fan so it's actually circulating the, the cold around can also help. Um, in terms of swaddles, probably the Ergo Cocoon for a newborn is going to be your lightest option because even though muslin itself is kind of thinner and more breathable, to get it secure with a newborn you've got to go round and round quite a few times, whereas that's just one layer. And so I would recommend Ergo Cocoon and during the day just a nappy inside um, and then just really do whatever you can to crank fan and fresh air and, and get lots of air circulating. And in terms of keeping an eye on your baby's temperature, the back of your hand on um, on the forehead or on the ear is quite good because you can um, you can do the back of your hand on baby's ear without disturbing them too much. The kind of old school way is like down on their chest but pretty much anytime you jam your hand down their swaddle or their bodysuit <laughs> to check on their chest they're going to wake up. So. So I always like the back of the hand on the ear. And your baby can feel warm, but if they're starting to look red or sweaty, then you need to lose some layers. Hope that helps. Um, so what else have we got? We might just show an old school muslin swaddle, if you'll be agreeable about that, Charlie. You think you'll be all right with one more? He's quite liking the white noise. Does he have white noise at home? He does. Yeah, what do you use? Um, we've just got our app on our phone that we put on. Yep. So a lot of babies are starting to use cell phones from a very early age. <laughs> aren't they? Oh, are you about to tell me you've just totally had enough? You've been amazing. Oh my god, she's watching. Shall we go back to mum and I'll show with the fake baby? Okay, we can go back to mum. <laughs> So a miracle blanket with a 12 week old. Yeah. So I think at 12 weeks you're sort of coming towards the end of your days with the, your beloved miracle blanket. They're quite hard to give up because they work so well. So I would start um, introducing a sleeping bag so you can swaddle, like what we did with these two. So look at sort of what weight sleeping bag you would want to use through the summer. Um, and then do your miracle blanket wrapped around the top. So by the time it gets really warm, um, say another month or so, you might be ready um, to have one arm out of the swaddle or you might be ready to ditch the swaddle altogether and then you'll be in your sleeping bag um, ready for those really hot summer days that are coming in a couple of months. <coughs> if you did want to carry on um, using a swaddle for a bit longer, swapping to something like the Ergo Cocoon um, and for now just alternate Miracle Blanket and your Ergo Cocoon 
to get baby used to it um, and then swap when it's really hot again this will be good for the middle of summer so just yeah for our last thing I thought I'll just show you swaddling with the muslin because that's something that always comes up um, as a popular summer option this is um, Lisa and she's a very agreeable she gets a lot of swaddling practice we've been swaddling with Lisa for years and she's never grown funnily enough so you want a big swaddle um, at least a meter but generally we'd use 1.2 by 1.2 so right over tucking it right behind the back come up from the bottom I'll just move Lisa up a bit so look for the corner making a little v-neck there the mighty out of the way Lisa pull it down hold that in the v-neck and then wrap that right round like that okay any last questions have we done all the giveaways Oh, did we? Oh, we need a winner for the um, Aiden and Anais. Kristen Greville, you are the winner of the lovely Wink Aiden and Anais. So drop us an email and claim your prize. Um, my question: How long does it take roughly for babies to get used to having their arm out? Mmm. So they have a boy that's five months old and doesn't settle with an arm out. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, it depends a lot on the baby, so there's no kind of real right or wrong answer with that. The first thing I would say is, has your baby got something like a kuski to cuddle with his arm out? Because that can help distract baby. Um, also work on, on the transition at the sleep where your baby settles best. For me, it was always the night sleep. Um, that I dropped the swaddle first which sounds often people think do it during the day because the sleeps are shorter and the impact will be less but often during the day it's light and noisy and there's a lot of distractions and um, the babies can be more overtired and it's harder for them to settle during the day so my advice would be if you've been trying it mostly in the day swap to trying with an arm out at night um, if you've been doing night as well then it's probably yeah just making sure there's some distraction um, that you stick with your white noise, you might just need to do a little bit more patting or shushing in the meantime. Um, and as I mentioned earlier with Charlie, sometimes you actually just need to hold hold the hand down, either by the side and pat it, or hold baby's hand up in whatever position it falls, and just actually help them get to sleep. And that could take, you know, maybe a week or two. And really just, you know, take your time, there's no rush as long as your baby's not rolling. And if your baby's rolling, then you really just need to ditch the swaddle, um, you know, in two or three days of being a lot, a lot more crying, and and then baby will come right. It sort of connects to the other question we have: is how long can you use the ergo cocoon for? How many weeks and months? How many weeks and months? Forever. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> um, so the ergo cocoon, that's the um, newborn size, which is zero to three months. That goes up to about six or seven kilos. No, I tell a big fib. I think that one's up to five kilos. And then this size, we've actually, there's a two to six month size, which is really good. This one's the three to 12 months. And so that's from about seven kilos. So there's definitely an in-between size. But the key thing with the ergo cocoon is it's really, really stretchy. And so the really the only consideration is when it gets too long. Um, whether, you know, if your baby's feet are too long for it, then it's time for the next size. But if your baby's using it with their arms out, you can pretty much just use that as a sleeping bag until your baby grows out of it, which that size, you know, will fit nine to 12 months as a summer sleeping bag. Um, Patch has a question. They have a five month old who was in the left room swaddling for about four weeks ago. Now they're in a sleeping bag, but seems to keep rubbing their face and pulling their belly out and waking themselves up and won't settle as easily. But had been sleeping well. Yeah, he won't, he, will he get used to having his limbs out soon? <laughs> or should they go back to the swaddle? How old was the baby? Uh, five months old. Five months old. 
And does she say if it's night and day sleep that's difficult? Yeah, my bones are coming. Um, I would probably, if baby's taking a really long time to get to sleep, I would go back to using the swaddle during the day. Um, if your baby's rolling, um, you can use a safety sleep over this. I used alternated between the ergo cocoon and the swaddle up up until nine months. The difference was he would sleep for two or three hours in one of these for both of his day sleeps or he'd sleep for 45 minutes if he was in a sleeping bag. Um, so I would use one arm out if I was using this one or both arms in for this. So I think the key thing is you can go back to using the swaddle as long as your baby's not rolling and if they're rolling then you need to safety sleep. Um, if you feel like the um, that your baby is is getting there and is you know adjusting to um, being out of the swaddle then you might as well stick with what you're doing but if you feel like things have really gone downhill um, and going back to the swaddle would make your everybody sleep better then I would just do that I'll go back to the swaddle there's no hurry apart from the rolling issue which I keep banging on about <laughs> Last question is um, from what age is a sleep aid safe to use, i.e., a snuggly toy? Snuggly toy, okay, so um, it really depends what the snuggly toy is that you're looking at. So, um, our most recommended is a um, Kuski, their kind of shape is designed to you know encourage it to fall away from the face and it's totally breathable material. But having said that, we still would take a conservative view of saying once your baby's out of the kind of SIDS risk so from um, you know five to six months SIDS is extremely rare as long as your baby doesn't have any of the risk factors so um, you know for me I used Kuskis with my babies from about five months um, if they were using it earlier than that I would take it out when they were asleep or safety pin it I used to safety pin it down to their sleeping bag so they could use it to cuddle but it wasn't up by their face but once your baby's five or six months um, a breathable safe comforter um, is fine to have in bed with them but I would really recommend that you don't introduce anything that's um, plush fabric like polyester any kind of um, polar fleece um, bulky soft toys there's really no place in the cot for those until probably a year old um, but your kind of um, muslin, bamboo, um, the little Kippen organic comforters are a really nice option. All of those from about five to six months, unless you're kind of attaching them somewhere safely. Okay, so if there's no more questions, we'll wrap things up and we'll say thank you very much to Stella and Charlie and their lovely mums for coming to demonstrate our swaddles with us. Thank you. It was only a day's notice, so we really appreciate that. Um, and also we'd just like to remind you that we've got 20% off all swaddles with our coupon at the moment. Um, the coupon code is SPARKLE and you can get 20% off any of the swaddles. And we might sneak Kuskis into the coupon code too. Or at least we've got, have we got another deal? Buy two and save. We've got buy two and save. So we won't be sneaking it in because we've already got a deal. Um, is there anything else James that, that's in that coupon code? Is it grow clocks? Grow clocks are in there, yeah. Sweet trainer clocks and some big bed styles, some big bed styles as well. Big bed styles. So just check our Facebook page and our website for all the details and we hope you found that useful. And if you have any more swaddle questions, just pop them on and we'll um, come get to those shortly. Thank you. Bye.